Uh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so Thomas's name has been already introduced twice. So, uh, you know, let's see <laughs> how I follow up with that. Uh, this is a, a project, not a conversation. It's a collaborative effort between uh, uh, me, Ambika, uh, Naeli, who is a material textile designer, and Thomas, who's a media artist. Uh, we'll just quickly start with our introductions as the slides progress. I am a designer. I've, I've designed museums and uh, managed them as well, big and small. I've been an uh, art director, a designer, a project manager, fundraiser, and also oftentimes a shoulder to cry on. Um, in 2000 and, oh, that's a 20 second thing. Uh, 2017, uh, when I was expecting, I started experimenting with creative coding and I started a secret Instagram account where I would share my work. It soon became a quick escape uh, from work and diaper business and uh, almost like self-care through code. Uh, in the same year, uh, I uh, sort of understood that this idea of code had a really soft transformative uh, power and uh, I was able to incorporate my experiments in uh, the works of Agatha Theatre Practitioner and also help the wonderful people in India's first museum mix. This is the first time I envisioned myself as a maker who could code. Uh, it was in uh, early July this year, uh, somebody messaged me wanting to learn the basics of code and many women had been approaching me uh, about this. So uh, I took a bunch of enthusiastic women and we started with an idea called uh, Recreating the Past. It's a wonderful learning methodology uh, uh, started by uh, the artist Zach Lieberman, uh, where you, you reproduce works of art based on uh, the, uh, the context of uh, past artists. We've been uh, working with uh, Nasreen Mohammadi, Zarina Hashmi, and now also with Aisha Zatoi, uh, Rana Begum, and many more uh, Indian artists, uh, South Asian artists. Uh, these are all the works of the participants who were all beginners to code. I stream regularly on a platform called Twitch. Uh, you, you're all welcome to join. It had become a bit boring to do that on my own. So now I get friends on and it's a fun one hour session every week. Uh, I'll uh, hand it over to Naili now, but leave you to think about three things that coding for value over solutions, coding as a community and coding with care and inclusion. Hello, uh, my name is Nayeli Vega and uh, I am a designer. I live in uh, Berlin. I, I originally from Mexico City, but I lived in Berlin since six years ago. Um, so I am um, very focused on topics like I'm very in my practice. I inspired by my own migration uh, experiences and also by feminist practices. Um, one thing I like a lot is the collaborations. I enjoy a lot to work with other people. Um, and this is part, very essential part of the things I, um, I like to do. Um, I like to work a lot with different methods and techniques to transform surfaces, for example, transforming textiles through digital fabrication. Uh, this is a uh, part of the practice I made uh, during my studies, my master studies at the Kunsthochschule Weissense. Uh, I am in my later uh, um, work, I am, I am very interested on to knots and how to reproduce them through different um, techniques like coding or like digital fabrication. I am uh, very inspired by different um artifacts ancient artifacts and this is a sample of prototypes that i do uh thinking on how to encrypt messages into surfaces through texture colors shapes and material properties uh, we will talk more about it uh, further yeah hi i'm <clears throat> thomas heitman i uh thanks for putting my joke at the end of the video by the way and um, I'm a Berlin based artist and you can follow me on the Instagram that you've just seen and I have a video that explains a bit a cheesy one that I made a while back so let's watch that first I hope it has sound because if it doesn't that's a problem <laughs> all right great doesn't work um, Good. Well, it, I'm saying basically explaining what my artist practice is in this video, and you can see a bit of our work and what kind of projects. Uh, and it's about space and uh, 
space related art inspired by um, space technologies, but also like the combination of physical, virtual and um, urban and public spaces and augmented reality, as you can see here. So um, all this was said in the video in a nicer way, but you couldn't hear it. So I hope it's clear anyhow. Um, so can we go back to the slide? Maybe. Thanks. So uh, yeah, this is um, um, how this looks. Uh, for example, I, I, I'm just presenting two projects that um, I made during my time in Bangalore. One is the um, um, hackathon spas, a space art hackathon that I made in um, collaboration with Shristi and Goethe Institute. And another one is the installation PSLVC37 that is shown later. And um, in this um, hackathon, we had like 48 hours where we combined different professions and skills of people and then experimenting on the exchange of knowledge, pretty much like what we did during this fellowship, but in a more condensed form. And then we produced space uh, related art. Um, and this is the um, um, installation that I showed during Bangalore Fantastic in 2017, uh, which is based on India's mission with this like same name and inspired by the payload of such a uh, set mission. And it combines a large satellite, a mission control panel, a cube satellites and real life video physics with augmented reality in a spatial experience. Um, but now let's talk a bit about uh, our current project, which is not a conversation, um, a neural not work prototype. And this one is exploring the concepts of AI, creativity and labor, um, inspired by the in ancient indigenous communication systems of the Kiponauts uh, that Naeli uh, mentioned already or will mention later. And it consists of the website, a web-based mobile detection app and the physical sculpture to instigate a communication and a reflection process to the use of knots and AI system. And it's designed as an open process and a proof, proof of concept with um, a working prototype that we're showing and presenting now. All right, so uh, for um, for starting our collaboration, we work it on, on our board of ideas, gathering some words and these words, uh, were kind of like uh, the direction where we wanted to go and then we started to to post some questions because we all had questions related to artificial intelligence um this is part of the of the work we are um um inspiring our um, not a conversation prototype that it's a, a, um, a relation onto the knots that are kipu knots these knots are ancient artifacts from the Inca times, pre-colonial and post-colonial. These knots uh, encrypted information through through the knots related to quantity, but also maybe to narrative. And it's related to the kind of knot and the, um, the direction of the knot and other properties. So we also took some ideas from the uh, previous work, from the current work from Thomas Heitman, who is helping us um, with this uh, image to, to also inspire our practice. Um, this is also part of the, of the images we collected to, for our conceptual part. Uh, we collected images that were related to this idea of the structure, networks, knots, strings. And these are the kipus. Um, the first image uh, belongs to the, um, to the museum, Technologisches Museum in Berlin. And these are one of the, of the knots, the kipus. Um, and the other images is an illustration from the when the colonizers arrived to uh, to the Inca Empire, this is another uh, collection of images we took to continue working on this, and um, these are um, illustrations from Santiago Cajal, 
who is a, a, a scientific but also an artist. And we have a Yakama uh, ball, which is a time ball used to collect experiences from women in the Yakama tribe. The most experienced, the more experienced, the bigger the ball. And uh, string games that are also um, related to the um, how the um, Navajo tribes could describe the uh, stories about the constellations and uh, drawing um, drawings and sketches from uh, Picasso. And this is an, a third board we made to search for inspirations related to um, installations in this direction we wanted to go and a collection of my own knots that I designed for the project um, and a mesh of knots containing messages as words, verbs, nouns, and adjectives. So we collected our questions. Um, we made a selection of questions we had about what does it mean artificial intelligence or what does um, what do we want to know? And we decided that we want to use this this uh, previous work on the knots representing words and translate it into knots representing questions. So we wanted to assign questions to each knot. And here uh, you can see um, this, these questions. From these questions, we selected from five to six to uh, represent them into knots and into a network. And I will handle to my uh, colleague, Thomas. Thank you. Yeah, so this is how this like then looked um, in a first uh, idea sketch. Um, of this uh, set virtually enhanced knot sculpture that um, we had in mind to create. And it was first designed as a physical sculpture that was um, inspired by these knots and the kipil, but also by neurons um, as like a structure or visual guideline. And um, uh, with, uh, with, this, with it, Oh, no, can you go back? That was supposed to stay a little longer, 40 seconds. Uh, with uh, visitors using their cell phones uh, to interact with the uh, sculpture. So that, um, and this to engage in interaction and communication. And it works like in the way as shown, like, so you detect a knot with your phone, um, it shows a question on your screen and then it generates, um, the AI generates an answer that you can then like see or hear. And this is a like continuous process. Um, that was the basic idea that we had. And then we started, um, we are just expanding a bit our process now. And we started with like discussions about the knots and which one to use and settled on uh, mathematical knots finally, because their topology potentially is endless, just like the com machine driven communication. And from there, we um, took those knots and we were like making a 3D model in Blender that combined these knots with the neural um, with a neuron structure or neuronal structure and created a low poly mesh for like then later export to our website. And this is the first uh, prototype of uh, the sculpture and website, which we ended up designing because of COVID-19 and we wanted to make it accessible anyway during these times, um, um, which was problematic for a physical um, approach. And um, this just shows the first test of this 3D model on our website and layout tests. And then this is the final look of the um, neural network developed with A-Frame. And Ambika is going to tell you a bit more about that part. Uh, okay, I guess we don't have much time left. So I'm just also adding a little link to the chat. Uh, we started off with uh, teachable machines and tested some knots that Naili had been making uh, to look at the ideas of embedding, uh, to look at embedding ideas in, uh, into knots and both knots not making. Uh, Naili, you can skip it. Uh, the final sculpture was trained uh, with teachable machines as well with about a thousand images for each knot. Uh, here I'm looking a bit bored, but as you can see, uh, the machine is still figuring things out. It still thinks I am not for and with an 82% confidence. So perhaps it's about embedding question and answers in humans as well. Finally, we have a look at our uh, uh, mobile web app, which kind of passed on. Uh, but if you go to the website, can you go back? Uh, 
get through. Uh, I don't know, Kame, do we have a minute or like 30 just seconds? Just 10 seconds to show the video, <laughs> that just the app, web app in action. So this is how So you can uh, open the website and then if you take your mobile uh, to, to any of the knots, the embedded questions appear and GPT-3 uh, responds back with uh, answers to these questions. The questions are of course embedded by us as the artist team. And the answers are of course given by the wonderful, uh, but uh, you know, always questionable uh, GPT-3 model. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here's the link and a QR code for you to check the project out. Thank you.